Content upgrades are an important part of seeing consistent growth in your email list and giving your audience that extra material to build that important trust factor that we all want. But unfortunately, a lot of solutions out there like lead pages are expensive or programs like ConvertKit just don't look great by default. So having a good way to deliver multiple content upgrades in your blog post can get a little tricky. But if you have an elegant theme subscription, either for Divi or another one of their themes or plugins, you can create gorgeous pop-ups for no additional cost for your content upgrades without having to pay a monthly fee for lead pages or anything like that. So we're starting out in ConvertKit and the first thing you want to do is click create form. You're going to choose a form and then the plain option over here on the right. We don't need to mess with any of these settings, so we're gonna go straight to the settings view. And then here, nothing major, just start by giving your form a name. You can customize your success message text, and then I usually have people opt into a welcome sequ sequence of some kind, but that is totally up to you. So I'm gonna start with a name. And then I like to have a kind of a semi-custom success message going on. And then from here, after you have your form name and success message, you can go into incentive email. Now, if this option isn't checked by default, you wanna go ahead and check and send incentive, and then come down here and customize this text again, just like we did on the main settings page. Something like, here's your freebie, and then maybe something a little more custom inside here. And then the important part, right underneath your message text, you wanna click incentive download, and then go ahead and drag and drop or upload your incentive here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop. And then when you see that here, you are all set. I like to click save form after this, just so we know we're good to go. And then go over into the embed tab and click raw HTML. So we're gonna leave this up for now while we go into WordPress and start getting the pop-up set up. So head over to your WordPress dashboard and click Bloom. If you don't already have Bloom installed, you're gonna to wanna to go to Elegant Themes and get that downloaded and installed on your WordPress dashboard. From there, you can click New Opt-in. You get a lot of different options here, but for this one, we want pop-up. And then we're gonna start with a name. So I like to give my pop-up the same name as my form and convert kit, just to make things easy to remember and keep straight. So I'm gonna do that. And now here is where we're integrating with ConvertKit. And ConvertKit does not have a direct integration at the time of recording this. So I'm gonna come down here and click Custom HTML Form. So now we're going back to ConvertKit and copy the embed code and paste it in here. So here's everything we need to make our pop-up talk to ConvertKit. Uh, ConvertKit, like we kind of went over before, doesn't have the most gorgeous opt-ins, and because of that, we want to remove all of the styles they added. So from here, scroll up until you see the opening style tag. So here it is. It looks like this. Just an opening bracket. You'll see style, and that's what we want. You're going to select that all the way down to the bottom and delete it all. So after you do that, you should have something like this. This right here is the text that will appear on the button. I never just want my button text to say subscribe. I like to have a better call to action. So if you are the same way, you can go ahead and customize this subscribe text. And that's all there is to the integration. So now we're gonna go ahead and set up the way the pop-up is gonna look and function. So click next. Now Bloom has a ton of different options available for kind of default views of how this looks. Um, for this, I'm just going to go with this first option here and scroll down and click customize. And you can update all the fonts and colors and all of that stuff, no matter which template you pick. So you will want to add a better title and message, but I'm just going to leave it for now. I like to have these centered though, so I'm going to do that. And then we're going to scroll in here. You're going to want to upload a new image. Uh, make sure it's at least uh, 290 by 290 pixels. 
um, but it can be bigger than that. It will resize it for you. And I always like to select hide image on mobile because I want things to be as streamlined as possible when people are visiting my website on phones. So we don't need that extra bulk there that the image is going to add. Next, we're going to go down to this styling section. And here is where you can update the fonts, colors, um, if you want square or rounded corners for your form, all of that good stuff. And if you kind of want to play around, you can always click this icon here to preview. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, I usually like to add a border, so I'll say full border, and I'll change the color here. And then we'll scroll down. Um, you can ignore this, we customized the button text in our ConvertKit form, so that's not going to change anything. And I like to come down here and update the background and button color. So I want my background to be pink and my button to be orange. And this is going to be the border you see. So we'll do a quick preview here. Those options I just showed will de decide how this um, border displays. And as you can see here, this is looking a little funky right now um, down here in the forms. But we have I have some custom code for this. So in the blog post that's linked below this video, you can go ahead and grab the code I'm about to use right now. After you have all your display settings ready, scroll all the way to the bottom, and we're going to add some custom CSS here. So I have mine copied, I'm just going to paste it in. Again, you can go grab that from the blog post that's linked below this video. From there, once you preview again, things are looking much better. So this is all the customizing I'm going to do to my form. Again, you can change this text, the fonts, colors of everything. Um, it's very easy to customize. I do want to go over a few of these settings here in case there's something you want to change. So right here, by default, ConvertKit displays a message that says the form is powered by ConvertKit. I don't want that to display, so I'm hiding it here. This is adding a little extra space above and below the email field. So it's adding a little space here and here. So if you want that bigger or smaller, these are the numbers you're going to adjust. These are styles that are being applied to the button. So I'm changing the font size, making it bold, and making it display all the way across the pop-up. Here I'm setting all the text to align center, so if you don't want that, you can come in here and delete this. I'm setting the max width of the image because I don't want it to be too big. Again, you can delete this if that's not a style you want. Here I'm adding a little space above the form text. And here I'm increasing the font size and removing some of the extra padding that the ConvertKit form added. If you want to update any of these settings, you're free to do that. You can come in here and play with these settings as much as you want. But now we can click Next and move on to setting when the pop-up displays. So I leave most of these alone for the most part, but we don't want this to show to everybody, so we're going to uncheck Trigger After Time Delay. We're also going to uncheck Trigger at the bottom of Post. We don't want anything to happen automatically, but we are going to check Trigger on Click. And this CSS selector is how we're going to control which items being clicked will show this pop-up. So you want to start by adding a period, and then add some text that's unique to the name of your content upgrade. So I usually, again, go back and grab the name of my form and copy it, paste it in here, and then just add a dash between any words. You do want this to be unique for each content upgrade. So if for some reason you think that a couple of your content upgrades might give you the same CSS selector, just add the number one or something behind it to make sure they're all different because you don't want two pop-ups showing up if someone clicks a button. So the most important thing is you make sure this is unique, you make sure there are no spaces, just use hyphens instead, and make sure it starts with a period here. Um, I also like to check auto close after subscribe. Now this doesn't always work, but if for some reason it does decide to work, it would be nice if the pop-up would close after someone signed up. And then our last setting here is we want this to display on everything. So anywhere we use this selector, we want it to show up. We don't want it to be limited to just blog posts or something like that. So now I'm going to click Save and Exit, and we are done with this portion. So now it's time to get this set up in a blog post. And I just have a demo post set up here, and I'm going to go over how you can add this to an image. And it will work the same whether it's a button, a link, um, anything, but I like to use images to draw attention to my content upgrades, so that's what I'm going to show. 
So you can start by adding your image. I'll just go here and choose a random content upgrade image I've used recently and insert it into the post. Now what we want is when someone clicks this, we want our pop-up to appear. So to do that, go into text and then go back to your opt-in form and grab that selector we made. So you can click the settings button, go over to display settings, and then copy this without the period. You don't want the period there, but you do want the rest of it. So go ahead and copy. Go back into your post and find the class. If you're using WordPress, it will automatically insert some classes. If it doesn't, just write class equals and then opening and closing quotes. But if it already has it, go ahead all the way to the end, right below the closing quote, hit space, and then paste in your CSS selector. So mine was demo form. So now if we go back, you don't see anything different, but it is hooked up to our content upgrade. So if I say preview, scroll down and click on it, and our pop-up is going to appear. If I write my name in this, sign up, ConvertKit's going to take over and deliver the content upgrade right to my inbox. And again, so we did this on an image. If you want to use it on a button or anything like that, you'll probably have something like a div. So maybe you use um, div and add a class of button. Maybe on the inside, you will put the text that you want your button to show. Close the div. Right in here is where you would add your CSS selector. So we would add demo form and you'd be good to go. Now I don't have my buttons um, super pretty looking. This isn't how I usually do it. But if I click preview and go ahead and scroll down and click the button, it's going to show the same pop up that we just saw. So anything that has the CSS selector we made will show your pop up. So I hope this was easy enough to follow along with and that you are super excited to have gorgeous pop ups for your content upgrades without those extra monthly fees. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you want to make sure you don't miss any future tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Or if you're a designer looking to collaborate with a developer on your design projects, be sure to click the button below to sign up for my free course, Get Back to Design.